there. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be pouring some shad heads from a do it mold. Uh, shad head pro rig. There's the there's the mold. I guess it's the only mold that I own, but I would imagine that this is about the most difficult mold that you can pour. I don't know that for a fact, but it's pretty pretty difficult. Um, a lot of failures in this. There, right, I'll show you the uh, the hook model numbers. This is a great great lead head. There's the uh, four rot. Four aught hook. There's the three aught. Right. And the hooks have a uh, have a I don't know, 45, not a 90 on them, which helps pull the the jig through the water, which works really well for swim tails, paddle tails rather, uh, as opposed to being you know like a 90. This part up here on a 90, it would just kind of jig. In my mind, anyway, I don't know that to be a fact. But these come with a uh, Oh, these come with, oh, I can show you on this, these come with a wire keeper, this little thing right here that holds the bodies on, that holds the, uh, the swim bait bodies on or whatever, uh, paddle tail bodies, I'm sorry, so that thing right there is a real bugger to get in there, I think I figured it out after doing it for quite a while, so I got right here, uh, the shad head mold is over the side of it and I'll tell you something else about that in a second and then under the stainless steel pot with melted lead in it I have a Coleman camp stove and it's on pretty high you want the uh, you want the temperature to be up there pretty good and you definitely want to do this outdoors now the stuff on the top is um, lead oxidation now I've heard, and I've actually done it with this batch, that you can put a candle, candle wax rather, uh, into your stuff, your lead. Once it's melted, it'll flare up, it'll, uh, you know, light on fire, uh, but it purifies it. I just like to scrape the top of it off. Like I said, I already did that to this. I don't know. I, I guess it does something, or people wouldn't say it does something, but... Who knows? So, in order to use this mold for the first time, when, you know, during a session, well, actually the first time, all right, so, you want to take a candle and hold this, you know, way over the flame of the candle and get black soot from the candle into the mold. That'll help it uh, remain, uh, you know, the lead heads won't stick, supposedly. So, the first time you use this during a session, it helps to run some lead through the through the size head that you uh, plan on casting. Now, I typically only cast the largest one right here because I fish in, in very swift water, but you'd want to do that for whichever head you have. Now, I think I'm gonna, let's see, I could probably show you how to load this thing right here. Now, one important thing that I found out is that you want to put it on something, you know, this isn't stable, but you want to put it on something stable. You don't want to just hold the mold up in the air and try to get this thing in, because it's not easy. And the other thing that I learned is that a, a good pair of, like, flat head pliers works really well. Helps out a great deal. So, right here we got the, uh, we're holding the short end of the wire keeper. See this? The short end of the wire keeper in the pliers. And that will allow us to, and this isn't as easy as putting it on my legs, so bear with me. Um, tried doing this a long time with my fingers. And like I said, if I had it on my lap, it wouldn't be this much of a problem. But you have to get that kind of right in there. your hook in. Very carefully. Now do it recommends that you don't uh, try to cast more than I think one of these at a time. Alright, so it just fits in there like that. 
Yeah. And then when you close it, you'll know if it's in the right spot because there won't be a crack right there along the seam. Right? So that now this is a stainless steel spoon here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the skim the surface of it. Oof. Skim the surface of it and get rid of that stuff. Yeah, so I didn't give up on the uh, the whole is uh, is gulp worth it video comparing the gulp uh, twister tail to the to some no name twister tail. It apparently is a name I didn't realize at the time, but I don't buy anything but Z Man. Z Men haven't stopped with that. So when you pour, you want to pour and let it run through as much as possible, right? You just pour a little extra, more than you need. If you have, you know, like one of those uh, uh, melting pot, that's what it's called, a um, lead melting pot with the bottom dumper, I imagine this would be a whole lot easier. But there you go, this is a uh, this part here is called the sprue, and then there's your lead head, you know, that's it. So, that's going to go in the old, old Z-Man box I just picked up. That's going to be my tackle box, right after I get this video with the swim shed, or the uh, twister tails done. I'm going back to the Z-Man. Probably not, I'll probably still, still try different stuff. Comparing the two, yeah, what two do you want? What what two lures do you want me to try? What do you want me to compare? And it's been kind of nasty out lately, so we're gonna, we'll get down there as soon as possible. Hopefully, it'll be, uh, the conditions will be favorable for me to bring the, uh, the kayak. It'll probably help if I put hooks in it, right? <laughs> right. Sometimes it helps if uh, you put the hook in first. Now another thing, uh, you know, if something does go wrong and you get a partial casting, ah, see, so you know, I can't really do this too well up front here. I got to hold it with the one hand. Two hands definitely helps. I said you just grab the, the small end here, pull it upside down, brace your arm. These pliers are very cold and I'm not shaking at all. There we go. See that? Close it up. Check the gap. Just keep the top. I'll let her go, let her flow. So, we are just going to go ahead and let do this like 10 more times. Yeah, sometimes you get a partial cast and it'll fill in. Actually, I have one here. Oh, and it's important, uh, not imperative, but it helps if you take that lead off. If you break the lead off of the sprue um, while it's still hot. Uh, it's a little bit more malleable. But that's a, that's like that's a partial casting. That's from using a cold mold, but you know this one's got a hole in it. I can twist the hook out of there, um, or you can just dip it in the lead and it disappears. You can scrape that off. It does kind of it oxidizes the hook. It burns the nickel plating off of it, so the hook is not the same after you do that. That's why you want to get it right the first time. But yeah, that's how to that's how to cast a uh, a do it swim shad head or paddle tail head so if you haven't seen it yet check out uh, uh, the 111 striped bass for those who dare that's been I, that's just been in my head for the longest time I, I smile every day from that all day every day I smile all day every day anyway but yeah, that's a good one you should check that one out and uh, look forward to the, uh, the, re the the result of the comparison video is gulp worth it? Not a big fan of gulp, but maybe it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you.